Farthest Frontier is quite a complex game, which makes it incredibly fun to play, but I did find myself starting over quite a few times before I learned more about this game. As such, in today's video, I'm going to go over a few things that I wish I knew before I started so you don't fall into the same mistakes that I made. If you'd like to see more Farthest Frontier content, please do consider liking and subscribing. It really is greatly appreciated, but let's jump into today's video. When you first start the game, you get given one of these things right here, which is a storage cart. Since the update, these can no longer be crafted, and so this will be the only only one that you get in the game. Now these are actually incredibly useful because if you click this wheel icon right here, then you get this where your mouse is. This enables you to then select where you'd like this to be moved off to. So if we left click, then we'll get this banner here showing that's where it's going to go. And then if I play the game, it'll start heading over there. The reason this is so useful and so important is early game, you can use this to have materials near a build site. So that could include materials that you're building the build site out of, such as logs and stone, or it could be food and tools for the workers. The storage cart can store anything. So when you're building early game, having this nearby means that the villagers will come here to store things and to build things rather than going to and from the town center. This is something I didn't find out until recently and is something that will be really useful in your early game production. When building roads, you'll see I like to build in a grid pattern and if you're the same, then when building roads, you can press N to get the roads up and you left click and then choose where you want the road to go. You'll see here, this is all skewed right now, but as soon as I hold down the shift key, then it will go off at 90 degree angles. You can see here it's red because we're already on a road. Let's go over to here, but basically you can see the road there is all straight if I come over this way and then shift again it'll be straight in that direction or straight in this direction and it also does diagonals as well so if you want to go as an exact diagonal you can use it for this as well this can be really useful if you want to grid your town out in the way that I have an extra tip about roads when you click on a dirt road you'll have the option to click the upgrade button however at the moment it's actually quicker to just go ahead and destroy the road and then rebuild the cobbled road if you go to your build menu to walls and roads you'll see that the cobbled road is unlocked at tier 2 the cobbled road does the same thing as the upgraded dirt road, but by destroying the dirt road and then building the cobbled road, it will save you time in the production process. Now, I will imagine this is something they will fix in the future, but this is just as of the current game. So in future updates, this may be something that changes. Be sure to check the update logs. Now, let's say you're short on a certain resource. Perhaps that resource is iron and you're looking around the map and you're seeing all these different icons, but you're struggling to see where iron might be. One tip is to go into your build menu to the resources section and then select the iron mine right here. Now, when I'm scrolling scrolling around my map looking for this, you'll see a highlighted area and boom, there we go. So instead of looking for one little icon for the iron ore, I'll see a highlighted area. This works for other resources too. You'll see with clay here, these are showing up in yellow. So again, that's very obvious where all of that is. So this will just save you a bit of time when looking for different resources on your map. You can use a hotkey of F to bring up the fertility of your land. You can use I to bring up the irrigation, so the water level, and G for desirability. These are very useful throughout the game. However, particularly the fertility and the irrigation ones are very useful before you even plan your town center. In this map here, for example, I wanted to build roughly in this area and I made sure that I built in such a place where there's still plenty of fertile land around for my farms. Depending on your map generation, what you don't want to do is start placing all of your early game buildings on top of the fertile area when instead you would want to save them for farms later on. As you progress through the game, a healer's house is going to be an important build for you. It is a very useful build to have in your town as it grows. However, you will see that the monthly cost is 30 gold. This is quite expensive and will definitely add up along with the other things you'll have at this point, such as rat catchers and composters that also have monthly cost. As such, what I recommend is once you've built your healer's hut, you can go into the GUI and remove the worker. So for example, this is a forager shack, but it works the exact same way. On the healer's hut, you'll see this right here and you just minus down until the slot is disabled. At that point, there is no one working your healer's hut and therefore the monthly cost will be zero, not 30. Then when someone gets unwell, you can simply turn it back on until they are healed and then turn it off again to keep that cost down. When I first started playing the game, I built an area that I thought I wanted to fence off for a farm and then completely changed my mind. And I thought that I had to click on each individual fence and then click the salvage button up here. As you can imagine, this took me quite a long time and something I don't want you guys to fall for because there is a fast way to do this. If you go to the clear button down here, hotkey is C and open that up, you'll see here you can select different things that you want to get rid of. So if we're trying to just get rid of our fences, then that comes under walls. So we just uncheck everything else and then draw an area on the map. You'll see the area you want to clear gets highlighted in red and then you can choose to either salvage a building or rebuild or upgrade if that's available which for these it currently is not or you can cancel if you made a mistake bear in mind if you decide to clear a load of for example trees from an area you will get more wood out of doing that but then they won't regrow so for the long-term harvesting you're better off to use the harvest tool for things like trees and bushes and things like that but the clear tool is a good way to destroy fences and also buildings and roads talking about harvesting if you select yourself to harvest a load of resources and then change your mind you can simply hold down the shift key to go over 
again and remove those from being harvested. Let's say I select all these resources here and I want to harvest most of them, but actually the bushes I don't want to harvest at this time. We simply uncheck everything else so that only bushes are selected and then go back over the area holding shift. If you watch here, you'll see the white outlines now and when I let go and all the bushes have been removed. This of course works with any of the resources. So we could do it with berries, for example, or whatever we want to make sure that we're only harvesting the resources we want. If you have an area that has a lot of resources selected, but there's one in particular that you want to get first, you can go ahead and click on that individual resource. So for example, this tree, and you can prioritize it so they'll harvest this first. You can also remove it as a target if you specifically want to keep this tree for some reason. Early game, you'll spend a lot of time harvesting your deer in order to get food and pelts to be used in your town. If you press F4, you can see at a glance how many deer are in the population, or you can just go ahead and click on the deer and it will show you the population over here. Now, as soon as I get down to two deer, what I like to do is find my hunter's hut that is nearby, which in this case is this one here. And then I'll actually remove the workers so there's nobody working there and nobody that's harvesting these deer. Then over time, you'll see that this number will start to increase. And when it gets back up to maybe five or six, I might turn it back on again, depending on how quickly I need the food. The higher you let that number get before you start to harvest them again, the longer you'll be able to go before you need to turn them off again. How often you'll need to do this is going to depend entirely on your town, how many hunters cabins you have harvesting the deer, how many deer there are there, as well as how good your supply of bow and arrows is to the hunters and the firewood for the hunter's cabin to work, plus the travel time of your workers and how many trees there are around the deer. So it is something you will need to micromanage a little, but it can pay off in the long run. I often find I've got no more than two or three deer population I'm harvesting early game, so it's not too difficult to just keep an eye on this every now and again. You'll find you're building a marketplace pretty soon into the game in order to supply nearby houses with resources. However, food will spoil in a marketplace a lot quicker than it will in a root cellar. Root cellars, of course, found in buildings under storage, and here is the root cellar. Root cellars will only store food, as you can see here, but they will store that food at a great temperature, meaning it will spoil less quickly. As such, you want to go into your marketplace and just left click each one of these food items until they're all deselected. This will prevent the marketplace from stocking food and therefore food will not spoil in the marketplace as it will be put in the root cellar instead. Please note that once you've done this, you do need to remove the worker, press play so that time is passing a little bit and then add a worker back in. If you do not remove the worker and then add a worker back in, they won't recognize that this food has been removed for a while. The idea of today's video was to share with you some things that I wish I knew before I started playing this game to stop me starting over a couple of times. I really hope I managed to help you out with at least a couple things and if there are some things you think maybe I missed that would be important in this video, please do let me know down in the comments. But for now, I just want to say thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.